Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is what? And his mercy endures forever. I can truly say I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. And as the scripture says, let us enter in his gates with what? And enter in his courts with praise. Praise ye the Lord. And we want to go before the Lord in prayer on today. Uh, we certainly do want to give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, from whom all of our blessings flow. How many of you know all your blessings flow from Jesus? Amen. That's where all your blessings are. So when you get in Jesus, that's where you find all your blessings. If you're looking for your blessings, they're where? In Jesus. Amen. So we certainly do want to thank God for our first lady. Give God a praise for her. Thank God for our mother who is David, say amen. And we thank God for all of our mothers. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We praise God for the mothers. And we uh, certainly give honor and respect unto them. Um, thank you, Lord. And we thank them for being the hand that rocks the cradle. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. So we certainly do praise God for each and every one of our mothers, and we uh, hope that you have received the little tribute that uh, was given unto you on today, and know that you are special and well-beloved. We praise God for you. Thank you, Lord. We thank God even for the mothers that uh, are raised in single-family households. We thank God for the mothers um, that, that are with the household, with the husbands, and all that uh, kind of condition. And we thank God for uh, mothers who are mothers to the children they didn't even birth. Amen. Amen. You can be a mother to the children who didn't come necessarily from your womb. Amen. But they uh, need your hand of guidance and protection. Yes. So we certainly do praise God for that. We praise God for all our ministers and all our deacons. And we give God glory and our men praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And we certainly do thank God for all of our visitors that are here today. And we praise God uh, for each and every one of you being in the house of the Lord. All right. So uh, as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, um, we want to certainly remember men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily, such as should be saved. Uh, we want to uh, realize that uh, prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. I was I had the privilege, the uh, Night Pain Global uh, uh, Ministry, uh, they had an all-night prayer. And, uh, you know, so they called me and wanted me to volunteer for take some time. So I took from 6 a.m. to 6.30 uh, uh, a.m. And uh, I thank God that I was involved in that prayer. And the Lord showed me some things that uh, immediately after that prayer, some things that I was, uh, that we got a standstill with, that I was asking the Lord to help with. Uh, that whole day, things started opening up one by one by one. I said, my, my God, look at that prayer. <laughs> that moves the mountains. Amen. So I'm going to have a Christian ministry all night for that one day. <laughs> So y'all gear up, put it in line, amen? Thank you, Lord, that'd be good. Uh, I ain't get a whole lot of amens. Tell you, but if you, got some, if you got some blockages, amen, if you need some mountains moved, that's surely one way to do it. And I'm telling you, it was one by one by one by one. Thank you, Lord, that, that I was hoping and counting on it. That we got to stand still. And God just kept opening the doors. Thank you, Lord. He's a good God, isn't he? Thank you, Lord. So, so we want to certainly pray. The Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. The Bible tells us to come boldly to the throne of grace. And the Bible tells us to make our requests known unto God. So if you have any requests that you want to make known unto God, now is the time. And you know, I've seen Sister Shikara, she put it up on there. And, you know, she's about to bring forth again. Amen. 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 We're going to pray her through. Amen. Hey, Lord. That sounded good, didn't it? Let's, let's, let's pray her through. Thank you, Jesus, that God will continue to bless. Amen. Congratulations to you, Steve. You got something to do with it. <laughs> Amen. We say we thank God. And David, I see him 
just sitting up there clapping. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. Be happy too. So let us be happy. Let us pray one for another. Uh, Sister Monique, she's about to have another baby. Anybody else have another baby? I'm just doing a check here. I got a check. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Any other prayer requests? Remember Sister Priscilla in prayer. Uh, remember Jesse uh, Collier in prayer and her family uh, in the uh, burying of their father on uh, yesterday. Brother Pippin, he was a member here of Christian Ministries. And, uh, let us pray. Uh, let the Lord uh, help him. Uh, Brother Leroy? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
God obtain mercy and that we might have found grace to help us in our time of need. Lord, you told us to call on you. You told us to trust in you. You told us to bless your holy name. And Lord, we magnify you on this day. We know where our help comes from. We're going to be healed from what's coming by our help. And we declare and decree that all of our help coming from the Lord. And we thank you, Lord, and we praise you in advance for everything that you are about to do. We thank you and praise you in advance for everything that you are doing. We thank you and praise you in advance for everything, Lord, that you have already done. That I will stop. The ways that you have already made. The doors that you have already opened. All of these that are yet to be made manifest. That are yet to be made known. Hallelujah, Lord, we know that in your time, all things work together for good. We know that in your time, all these things will come together.
been here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to feel it moving. Hallelujah. You know, one brother, y'all got to forget old pastor just for a minute. One brother, because he was explaining to me about the Holy Ghost. This is last week he was explaining about the Holy Ghost. And he had another little twist in it. He said, well, you know, we like the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost come and move, you know, uh, without warning, without direction. It just move upon you. Amen. Just like the wind. You don't know what direction is coming. And you know, the way he was explaining it, I was like, okay, okay, I can get with that. You know, because uh, I can honestly say it's something about that Holy Ghost. Right? That we cannot explain. Amen. But we aren't we glad that we got it. Yeah, Lord, I'm glad that I got it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. We want to look at uh, Proverbs. Let me get my composure back. I, I promised myself that I would be composed. <laughs> Let us look at uh, the book of Proverbs uh, 31. Amen. Proverbs 31. And drop down with me to verse number 10. I'll read the first verse and you read the second. And we'll go back and forth and then I'll take over. All right. He says, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. She will do them good and not evil all the days of her life. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises also while she is night, and giveth each her household, and a portion of her maids. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candles goeth not out by night. She lifteth her hands to the spindle, and her hands holdeth the staff master. She stretches out her hand to the poor, yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She maketh herself uh, coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her she maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivered girdles unto the merchant. My God. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She her Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Favor is deceitful. And beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be what? Praise. She shall be what? Praise. Praise. Read. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the Amen. Come on, give God a praise for a virtuous woman. Thank you, Lord. And we thank God for the reading of this word, and we certainly thank God that He has blessed us. And then verse 23, it says, Because of her, her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders in the land. Thank you. Let me ask some questions. Man, you got a good one. <laughs> Come on, let the church stand. Oh, not the no, whole stand. We turn over to the priest. Yeah, he's good. 
acknowledge him in all your ways, and he shall do what? Come on and give God a praise. The steps of a good man or a good woman are ordered by the Lord. Uh, don't give up on God. Hallelujah. He won't give up on you. We want to say thank you, praise the Lord, for our praise team and our worship team. Uh, and they have blessed us on today. And you know, uh, we know that they are praise and worship leaders. So to lead us into the King of Kings, into the Lord of Lords, and into his courts and into his gates. And we know that we are not uh, spectators, amen, but we're participants. Am I right? When we give God praise, the blessings come down. God is the spectator. <laughs> and he's looking, he's looking at you and seeing how your praise is. And then if your praise is honest and sincere, uh, broken and contrite, he'll inhabit your praise. Amen. He'll get in your praise. Thank you. That's why people get happy because the Lord got in my praise. Uh, that's when people get joy because the joy of the Lord becomes our what? Amen. He gets in your praise. So if you don't praise him, you ain't giving him nothing that can happen. Uh, you ain't giving him nothing to work with. You got to give God something to work with. Amen. That's why he said that everything that I want, do what? Praise ye the Lord. Come on and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. So we praise God and we magnify him on today. And as we get ready to move into our announcements, thank you, Lord. We uh, certainly uh, give honor and thanks unto the Lord for his greatness and his mercy that he has shown toward us and has allowed us to come together. Thank you, Lord. And we want to announce that also the, uh, uh, the New Horizons uh, Daycare Center will be opening in July. Amen. applications uh, for those that want to be a part of the uh, daycare system here at Christian Ministries. Um, and um, you know, you've got to meet certain qualifications. You've got to be able to pass um, your, your background checks. And, um, and um, so we want you, uh, if you can pass that, do you know whether or not you can pass it? <laughs> so we want you to put your application in you got to love children. You got to love to work with children. Love hearts and minds. And, and want to make and mold those children. Where our model here will be every day is a new learning and growing experience. So look forward to our pamphlets that are coming out, our handbooks that are coming out, and our applications. And if not only that, thank you, Lord. Holy Ghost is helping me. Holy Ghost said, don't, don't forget to tell them if you have children uh, ages two and a half and up. Uh, tell them to apply. We're going to take children all the way up to, for the daycare, all the way up to 12 years old. Two and a half to 12 years old. Amen. So, um, we have capacity for 32 children. Amen. I'm hoping that we get all 32 on one day. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but we want to fill it. Amen. Thank you. We don't leave nothing on the table. So we want you to be excited about that and be praying for that because uh, that's the next phase into uh, what God has for us. And then what that means for uh, uh, Bishop Quinn is I'll be coming off my job and I'll be down here full time. Come on, give God a praise. I can't wait. You know, when I was walking through the hall today, uh, uh, you know, in the morning I turn on the lights and unlock the doors, whatever. And as I was walking, I was thinking in my mind, I said, Lord, let me uh, don't forsake the sanctuary five days a week. I want to, as long as I'm here working here, I want to at least spend some time with you. Yeah. Amen. To come into the sanctuary yeah. and pray unto our God. My thought is, and I don't know if it's going to work out, but I really want to pray at noon every day. You know, and those that would want to join me at noon every day, Doors will be open, coming in and praying, and then seeking God. How many of you want God like that? Amen. I'm asking God, God, help us, help me, amen, and fulfill that because that's our heart's desire. And other ways, by way of announcements, we um, are looking to have a, uh, for those.
schools, uh, members that have been uh, working with us to become daycare staff, looking to have a staffing meeting uh, on Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Uh, Tuesday at 6 o'clock. So we want to have that meeting here so I can give you uh, the plan and what we want to do moving forward. Amen? Amen. We thank God and for each and every one of you. And other ways, by uh, way of announcements, also praise the Lord, saints, courtesy of the Night Pain uh, States Council Sunday School Department, where our chairman is Elder Gerald Daniels, amen, the father of our deacon, Deacon Robert Daniels, amen, we thank God for them. Uh, we have bowling at the Green Garden Lanes with Christian Ministries at 1583 West 38th Street, Erie, PA, enjoying two hours, two hours, uh, Saturday, June 5th, 2021, and you know, we'll uh, set up a, a, a van, a uh, list of van riders, and we'll give Deacon Fields the keys so we can drive the children. Charge your children. <laughs> uh, take them bowling. Amen. He says, come early and get your shoes, balls, so that we can create lanes and start promptly. The clock will start at one and will be and there will be bumper lanes. Uh, bumper lanes is those ones where you have guard lanes, right? For kids. Okay, good. And the others will be set up to bowl on both lanes. Please sign up so lanes can be designated before the event. If you have a partner, please let us know. Thanks for your participation. Amen. So please uh, sign up with Deacon Fields. He's the one that's in charge of this great event. Amen. So that the Lord will uh, bless and, and, and do a great blessing. Amen. It's blessing time in the sanctuary. I said it's blessing time in the sanctuary. And you know, we uh, certainly do uh, want to honor our, our brother, Brother Harper, in that meeting. I'm with him. My sister Cora got her two children. Yeah, young kids, they got her hands. They got her hands. Hallelujah. Uh, she, she came in with a different stride today. <laughs> and, and Brother Dave, I want you to know Brother Fields requested prayer for you today. How many of you know prayer changes today? Yeah. Yeah. He did that all the work. See that? Ain't God good? Yeah. Amen. And that's why we should always pray. Yeah. Amen. We certainly thank God that it's blessing time. The scripture says it's more blessed to give than to what? Receive. And we know that God uh, loves a cheerful giver. And if you are part of a member of Christian Ministries, uh, you should support the ministry through your tithes and your offering. Amen. You should not uh, give your tithes and offering uh, to other ministries. Um, well, not, um, I mean, that, uh, you shouldn't give your tithes to other ministries. Certainly, you can support other ministries with your offerings. But, you know, if you have to give your tithes, you should give your tithes to your own church where you're in. Uh, there can be meat in the house where you attend. Amen? Amen? You wouldn't take your grocery money and give it to the neighbor down the street and you don't have groceries in your own house. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. So let us, let us, let us um, do the things that are right in the sight of the Lord. Amen? So if you are about to give, let the church stand. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for the ability to give, to sow seed into the kingdom. And we thank you for obedience. And we thank you, Lord, for your promises that are connected with our giving. And we ask you, Lord, that we uh, bless you and that we release all the blessings that are connected to giving, that you may bless this house and that you may bless your people. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Turn you over to the hands of our urchins.
Lord is worthy. Yes, Lord. chapter number 3 and verse number 1. Uh, verse number 1. Acts chapter 3 and verse number 1. It reads as thus. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lay from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that enter into the temple. Verse number three, who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And the Bible says, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what at that which had happened unto him. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you, Lord, for this word on today. We ask you, Lord, that you open up our hearts and our minds, that you grant us the door buttons. Father, we thank you and praise you. 
In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. And I want to take special note of verse number six. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And I want to take for a thought from that particular verse, such as I have, such as I have. Can we say that together? Such as I have. And as we look over this very familiar, familiar passage of Scripture in the book of Acts, we see that Peter and John, we take something from this Scripture that they would pray for people, that they went up to the temple at the hour of prayer. That hour of prayer being the ninth hour would be 3 p.m. That would be the time that they would offer the sacrifice unto the Lord. Your Lord Jesus, he died, gave up the ghost around 3 p.m. And, and hung his head and said it was finished. And also, too, we see that in this particular scenario, that there was a, a man that was lame, that was crippled from his mother's womb. And that means that he was dependent all of his life, that he needed help even to survive. Some cultures that uh, the child wouldn't have made it if uh, it wasn't a caring and a nurturing uh, parent, a caring and a nurturing culture. And this child, he was taken to the temple, the place on a daily basis where he could receive sustenance, where he could receive help. And that's symbolic to what the church should be today. The church should be a beacon of light for those that are crippled, for those that are lame. Jesus himself said when he came into his ministry, he quoted the scripture from the book of Isaiah chapter 61. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Y'all remember? He said, he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive." the recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And let's take note of that particular scripture where he said to heal the broken heart, to set the captive free. The church should be a place where hearts can be mended. The church should be a place where those that are bound and held captive can be the scripture says, whom the Lord has set free is free indeed. Jesus is all about freedom. Jesus is all about deliverance. Jesus is all about uh, healing. The Bible says that his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, uh, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. Hallelujah. And we know that in him is deliverance, that in him is healing. So when we come boldly to the throne of grace, uh, when we come boldly to this throne of grace, we can expect healing in the house of God. We can expect those that need some help to receive their help. Because believe it or not, we all have been lame. Hallelujah. The Bible says we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all need some help. Uh, I don't know about you, but, but I, I need some help when I come to the house of the Lord. Uh, I need some strength when I come to the house of the Lord. You know, the enemy, the devil, he's full of confusion and every evil work. Uh, but, but when you come to the house of the Lord, there should not be any confusion. There should not be any evil work. We should all come with one accord to receive some help from the Lord. And that's what this man did. He came expecting to receive. When you come to the house of the Lord, you should come expecting to receive. Uh, come expecting to receive some help. Come expecting to receive some strength. Come expecting to receive your healing 
and your deliverance. I'm reminded of the woman uh, that had the issue of blood. And, and y'all know that she was bleeding for a long time. And, and, and spent all that she had. And the Bible says that she was none the better. Uh, but she, she, she got it made up in her mind that she was going to receive Jesus. She, she made up in her mind and, and cast some faith in her own mind. She said, uh, if I could just touch the heel of his garment, I can be made whole. She, she had an expectation. Her, her expectation was that if I touch him, I can get deliverance. Our expectation should be if I touch the hem of his garment, I can get some deliverance. And if I just raise him in the sanctuary, I can get some deliverance. If I lift up the name of Jesus, I can get some deliverance. My God, I feel a Holy Ghost up in here. It's telling me that sometimes we don't come to the house of the Lord with an expectation. We don't come to the house of the Lord believing and trusting in the Lord. You know, sometimes we can come to God's house and be complacent. We can come to God's house and just think that it's just routine. But, but how do you know that there's nothing routine with your God? That, that your God can make a highway out of nowhere. That your God can open doors that seem to be shut. Your God can move mountains. How, how do you believe that on today? How do you that no day should be just an ordinary day with the Lord? Because last time I checked, He gave us brand new mercies. Oh my God, it's up to Lord's mercies that we are not consumed in because His compassion, His, His love, if they fail not, the Bible says they are new every morning. What great is thy faithfulness? So, so you can come with the expectation that I'm going to tap into the faithfulness of God. That you can come with the expectation that I'm going to tap into that brand new mercy that God has laid up for me. That God has laid up for you. You can come with the expectation that, that I will not be denied. I will not be cast down. I will not be destroyed. That I'm coming for my blessing. I, I'm coming for my deliverance. I, I'm, I'm coming to the house of the Lord with an expectation. How many of you know you've got to have an expectation? Hey, glory. You've got to have an expectation when you're dealing with the Lord. You've got to expect Him to show up. You've got to expect Him to show His glory. You've got to expect Him to show His power. And the Bible says that He that shall come, He will come, and He will not tarry. Hallelujah. Uh, this lame man that was laid at the gate is like you and I. Hallelujah. Uh, that we need to be laid at the gate. Hallelujah. Uh, we need to come to the gate. And the Bible describes it as a beautiful gate. Hallelujah. Uh, we need to look at the house of God as being beautiful. Uh, we need to look at the house of God of being where our help comes from. We, we need to, David said, he said in his song that, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That I will hardly inquire of the Lord and, and behold the beauty of the Lord and, and to inquire in his temple. When you come to God's house, you need to see some beauty. You, you need to see the glory of God. You, you need to see something that's able to help you in your time of trouble. You need, you need to grasp hold of what God is doing in his house. Yeah, yeah there's some lame folk, there's some sick folk, there's some folk that need some help, but, but you need to thank God that they're in the right place. Yeah, that you're in the right place to receive the help that you need. Yeah, that they're in the right place to gain the power that they need. Yeah, you know, when you when you can get connected with God, can I, can I just talk to you just for a moment? When you get connected with God, God is able to turn your situation around. How do you know God is able to turn your situation around? And when you come to God with a broken spirit and a, and a contrite heart, the Bible says that He will in no wise despise you. That he will in no wise cast you out. And if you just be honest, if, oh my God, who am I preaching to you today? If you just be honest with your God and, and say, Lord, it is me, oh Lord, that, that is standing in the need of prayer. That, it's me, oh God, that, that needs your help. It's me, oh God, that, that have gone astray and I just need your help. I, 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 it's not my brother, it's not my sister, but it's me, oh God. I, I need your help. I, I need your help. I, God said it is right that he'll help you and that right early. I don't even believe that on today. I don't even believe the word on today. 
was lame that he had when he came to the house of God. You know, another point about this lame man that, 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 that you know, that's where he, he was expecting uh, his living because, you know, he was lame, he was crippled, and he depended upon the God's house. Oh my God, you know, there's people that are lame, that, that are crippled, and they, they're depending upon the house of God. And, and because they're depending on the house of God, our, our arrow, they're competing, they're depending on those that are in God's house uh, to be able to offer them something. Uh, my God, uh, they're depending on those that are in the house of God to help them in their hour of need. Uh, they're depending on those that are in the house of God to, uh, to strengthen them, to give them something uh, when they come into the house. Uh, my God, you know the worst thing live in a house for 20 years and, and not have no furniture uh, and, and not have a stove not, not have a refrigerator that, that you're sitting up on a crate and you got a microwave and, and, you, and you got nothing else in that house that, uh, uh, you, you ain't got nothing to offer anybody uh, in that house and you see God's house uh, my God, God wants us to be uh, those who he has called so that we can offer some help Oh uh, my God, that's where uh, we come into our scripture where the Bible says that the man came into the house expecting to receive something. And then Peter said, he said, silver and gold have I none, but, but such as I have. You know, such as I have, give I unto thee. You know, you know when, when you've got to be grateful uh, for what you have. You know, a lot of us, uh, we look around and we get discouraged for what we don't have, but don't give God praise for what we have. You know, God has given you something. God has put treasure in earth and vessels. So, so you got more, my God, than you think you have when you're following after the Lord. You, yo, my God, don't hit me up in here. Yeah, yo, and you got something to offer because God is on your side. And, and God be for you. It's my 
righteousness and then all those other things shall be added unto you. Don't get me wrong, brothers and sisters. We need some natural stuff. We need some houses. We need some furniture. We need some silver and we need some gold. Don't, don't get me wrong, but, but you know what we need more than that? We need Jesus. What we need more than that? We need the Savior on our side.
God. We may be in the house of God. We may not have a lot of riches. We may not have a lot of gold. But I tell you this. We got a lot of faith. We got a lot of testimonies. The Bible says that we're surrounded about God a great cloud of witnesses. Oh God, I start to turn the service over to the testimony service. Because when you testify of the goodness, when you tell them the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you, it causes somebody to receive something that they can live with.
freely give them away. If I got the love of Jesus, I should give it away. If I got the patience of Jesus, I should give it away. If I got the faith of Jesus, I should share it and give it away. If it's in you, do what? Give it away. He says, such as I have, what? Give I unto thee. And because Peter wasn't stingy like some of us, I'm just going to worship him by myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. You Catholic, you can't come in here and worship. Uh, you Protestant, you can't come in here and worship. Huh? Ooh. Y'all looking at me. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. The doors of the church is open. Whosoever will. I know that bad is. Huh? Whosoever will, let him come. Peter said, silver and gold have I not, such as I have, give I unto thee. Some of y'all, you know, because you have bank problems. Well, you have bank problems. Here we go, here we go. I'm going to hit you low here. You're a child molester. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't talk to me. Hmm? You're Asian. You can't talk to me. Follow me? Can't be like that. Amen? Can't be like that. Especially in the church. He says, silver and gold have I done, but such as I have, give I unto thee. If you got Jesus, give him away. And that changed that man's life. You never know the people you come in contact with. God puts them in your path so that you can change their life. All souls belong to God. I want to preach a message one day. Glory carries. We carry the glory of God. We are the light of the world. We are a, a city and a son of the hill. We are the sword of the earth. We are glory carries. And people need what we got. Have you ever thought about it? Folk is sick and dying. Why? Because they need the panacea. And the panacea is Jesus, and we carry Jesus with us. It ain't about the silver, it ain't about the gold, but it's about the name of Jesus. Now, how do you know there's power in the name? There's deliverance in the name. Yokes can be destroyed when you call on that name. Huh? Every knee should bow and every tongue should confess when you call on the name of Jesus. And when Peter introduced that man, he had confidence. The Bible says he grabbed him. And immediately, faith hit. His feet and ankle bones received strength. Faith without what? Is what? When you know you're using that man, use some faith. Reach out and grab somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let faith help a man. And then the man, because Peter was willing to share Jesus with him, the Bible says he did something he never done before. He started leaving. Uh, and that always amazed him. He started walking. Y'all know babies, they, they got to crawl before they walk. God, the Lord expedited the process. Uh, complete healing. Not only, oh, I want y'all to catch me. Not only did he heal his feet and ankle bones, but he told all of his, his members, his ligaments, and even his brain how to walk. Yeah. Complete healing. Yeah. Complete deliverance. Yeah. You follow? Yeah. Now, he didn't need no physical therapy. <laughs> oh, he, didn't need, he didn't need no cane. It wasn't no practical process. It was immediate deliverance. How do you know we serve a right now, Lord? A right now deliverer. A right now help. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Stop. I'll wait for folks to be weaned off the bottom. <laughs> I'm going to stop myself. Hey, hallelujah. Thank 
He showed that example. I'm done preaching. He showed that example because he's trying to show us the man was lame, which represented sin. You follow me? It represents immediate restoration. When you come to the Lord in sin, which he wants, amen, and, and, and you receive the name of Jesus, you can have immediate restoration. If any man be in Christ, he is a what? A new creature. That man, he got up, he was new. He was new through and through. A new creature, all old things, that old lifestyle had passed away. When you come to Jesus, your whole lifestyle, that old lifestyle passes away, and you become new. Fresh walk, fresh anointing, fresh praise. Hallelujah. I see y'all tired now. I'm going to let y'all go. Hallelujah. Let the church sing. Hallelujah. I can't hold feet to sheep. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Lord, I want to be new. Lord, I want to be fresh. Make me over. Say it again, Sister Jackie. Make me over. Amen. I want to be fresh. How many want to be fresh today? Hallelujah. Send us a fresh enough. Send me a fresh enough. Send me a fresh word. Hallelujah. And I'm going to offer you something. That's not silver and gold, but such as I have, yeah. give I unto thee in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Let it be our prayer. Oh, gracious Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for our pool being in and set up so that we can make a proper altar call so that souls can get delivered and set free. Yeah. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this anointing that is in this place. We thank you, Lord, for each and every soul that has come out to be here in this place. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that you search our hearts, search our mind and our spirit. Make us whole. God, kind of those shot. Help us to realize that we may not have a lot of silver, a lot of gold, but we got the name of Jesus. Yeah, hallelujah. Because we got the name of Jesus, we possess all things. We can do all things through Christ. That strengthens us. Lord, we ask you to blood wash us and cleanse us, purge us from all iniquity. And Lord, give us that heart and mind to praise you, to worship you, uh, to give you away. Bless us, Lord, with a mentality to look for people to witness to. Hallelujah. To look for people to share your greatness. And Lord, not only that, but let them find us. Hallelujah. Let them find us so that we can tell about your greatness and your glory. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that you be already pen in our mouth that we may write the vision and make it plain. Yeah, yeah. Father, we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. We lift up the hands, one Lord, one, Lord. one, faith, one faith, one baptism. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen.